Welcome back. With 2024 around the corner, there are some important deadlines to be aware of because it could cost you if you miss them. Earlier, my colleague Greg Bunnell spoke with Nicole Ewing, Director of Tax and Estate Planning at TD Wealth, about some of these key end-of-year deadlines to get on top of, including tax loss harvesting. Essentially, we are looking at our portfolios, identifying where we might have some losses that we want to trigger so that we can use those losses to offset gains. So we want to have a look through and see how our portfolio is doing, but caution around currency and exchange rates, because that's very important when we're looking at the cost base and the fair market value of those securities. It's in the, we, we need to be mindful of this is, if it's US securities, for example, we need to be looking at that US dollar rate um, compared to when you purchased it and what it's at now. So making sure that we factor in the exchange rates so that we, uh, we don't inadvertently trigger a gain when we're trying to be harvesting for losses. Although, you know, gains aren't so bad either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's an important one to consider there. Uh, I know from what I'm living through right now that post-secondary education is very expensive. We've got two sons right now university at the same time, RESPs. Talk to me about those and the deadlines there. So again, deadline of December 31st, but what's important to think about here is that when you make those contributions to an RESP, up until the child's student's 15, you are eligible to receive a grant back up to 20% well, 20 of your contribution, up to $500. So if we're making a $2,500 contribution, we get a $500 grant from the government. We do have the ability to carry that forward, but only one year. So you can contribute the $5,000 in the following year and be able to get that full $1,000 grant. But we need to be, um, you know, have the account open and making those contributions in order to be getting those grants. All right, I've already listed a number of things on my calendar here. We have more, though, to go through. TFSAs, tax-free savings accounts. What do you need to know both about contributions and withdrawals? But this is a good news story. So if you are thinking about withdrawing in the next couple of months, you might want to think about advancing that to take out the money now because your contribution room regenerates January 1st. So rather than dipping into the funds in January and wanting and having the money to recontribute later in the year, you would have to wait that full calendar year till January. So if you're going to take the money out, now's the time. But we have some great news on TFSAs. The contribution rate or limit is going up to $7,000 um, in 2024. So that's additional room that we can put our investments into these accounts and have that growth um, accruing tax-free. We can take the money out tax-free. Very, very efficient way of investing. All right, that's some advice I'm going to put to work because, uh, yeah, those post-secondary education is looking for more money from me in January. <laughs> i got to get that in order. Uh, first, home savings accounts. This is a bit of a new one for people. Uh, what do they need to consider before opening one in the new year? Well, again, so it's, this is an interesting one because, again, end of the year, December 31st, is the relevant time period. But we only have the ability to carry forward the contribution room by one year. So if you're not necessarily thinking about purchasing, you might want to be delaying. Otherwise, you might want to be thinking about some of the strategies that you could do. But again, opening that account is going to give you contribution room for two years come January. So making that contribution now um, or opening that account now would allow you to get the benefit of that two years worth of the um, of the contribution room for the first home savings account. If you wait until January, you'll have missed the opportunity to have this year's um, contribution room available, but you can carry it forward to next year. Beyond that, um, we might need to be thinking about some other options. All right, important to keep that in mind. I feel like we're running the whole gamut of life here. Let's talk <laughs> about people who turned 71 this year. Uh, the RIFs, conversion deadlines, what's going on there? So conversion deadlines of December 31st of the year in which you turn 71. So those who are 71 now need to be making decisions about what they're going to do with their RRSPs. Um, if you don't make the decision, the decision will be made for you. And that entire uh, RRSP will be included in your income. Um, it will be 
sent out to you. So we want to be thinking about our options. We can convert it into an annuity. We can convert into a RIF, but we need to be doing that by December 31st of the year in which we turn 71. And for those who aren't turning 71 or haven't turned 71 this year, look at your RRSPs as well based on your income this year maybe it's a little bit lower maybe we want to be thinking about some um, drawing down on some of those rsp funds a little bit earlier depending on what our retirement plans are um, if we're in a lower tax bracket this year and we want to reduce the amount of mandatory withdrawals that would be required to be taken once we are in a RIF. Right, Nicole, the funny thing about deadlines is there's usually consequences for missing them and getting beyond them. Uh, something specific on the tax front, the interest rate on overdue taxes as of January 1st. I understand it's going up. It is going up. So as with a lot of rates when it comes to taxes, it is um, it, sub, it's um, attached to the uh, to the interest rates and as they climb so too does the interest that the government wants and when we think about late filing um the the intention is to want to discourage people from doing that we want people to be filing their taxes now in as recently as second quarter 2022 that overdue amount was five percent some people sort of thought of that as a maybe a low cost way of borrowing and putting their money elsewhere. It is going up to 10% as of January. So late filing, I would suggest it is um, not a great idea. This is in addition to the late filing penalty. So this is the amount on overdue taxes. File your returns, get those in, at least um, in stop the penalty that you would have for non-filing but we need to be mindful that any late payments are on our outstanding taxes at 10 percent as of next year and that was nicole ewing director tax and estate planning at td well speaking with greg bennell and that is our show for tonight any comments or questions or if you'd like to get in touch with an advisor please email us at moneytalk at td.com thanks for watching i'm kim parley and we do hope to see you again next week the preceding paid commercial program was brought to you by TD Wealth.